Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today in this episode of VIT Triple E Questions with Solutions, we're going to be looking at some questions which were asked in previous episodes and I mean previous exams of VIT Triple E 2013. So today's subject is physics and we're going to be looking at some physics questions asked in VIT Triple E 2013. And these questions are important, so we hope that you watch until the end of the video. Let's start off with the first question. Two balls of equal masses are thrown upward along the same vertical direction at an interval of two seconds, with the same initial velocity of 39.2 meters per second. The two balls will collide at a height of A, 39.2 meters, B, 73.5 meters, C, 78.4 meters, D, 117.6 meters. Which of these is the correct option? So let's look at the material, the information given in the question. The two balls are of equal masses, so mass does not play a role. And they're thrown upwards along the same direction at an interval of two seconds. So if the first ball was uh, sent at the third second, then the second ball will be sent at a fifth second. That means that the time period of the first ball will be t plus 2 seconds if the time period of the second ball is t seconds. And another important information is that the same initial velocity of 39.2 meters per second. So both balls have the same velocity that is 39.2 meters per second. So we need to find the height at which the two balls collide. So now what we do we will consider two balls colliding at a height s from the ground after t seconds when the second ball is thrown upwards. So that means the ball spent t seconds in the air, the second ball it spent t seconds in the air before colliding with the first ball. So if the second ball took t seconds, then the time taken by the first ball is t plus 2 seconds. And then the distance traveled, s, will be equal to the initial velocity 39.2 times the time that is t plus 2 plus half times g, since it's vertical direction, then there will, the acceleration will be g, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So minus 9.8 times t plus 2 squared. And this is according to the second law of kinematics. So so we can write, we can, you know, simplify this equation as 39.2 times t plus 2 minus 4.9 into t plus 2 squared. Now similarly, for ball 2, the same distance s will be 39.2 times t minus 4.9 times t squared. So we can take this as equation 2 and the other as equation 1. So from equations 1 and 2, since s is the same in both cases, you will get 39.2 t plus 2 minus 4.9 t plus 2 squared as equal to 39.2 t minus 4.9 t squared. So now let's um, expand the terms on the left hand side so that we can then cancel out common terms. So you get 39.2 t plus 39.2 times 2 so 39 times 2 is 78, 2 times 2 is 4, so 78.4, and then minus 
4.9 times the expansion of t plus 2 the whole square. So that is minus 4.9 times t squared plus, I mean, instead of, it'll be, it'll be t squared plus 4t plus 4. So t squared plus 4t plus 4 times minus 4.9. So you get minus 4.9t squared minus 4.9 times 4 gives you 19.6 and then t minus 19.6 and then on the right ha right hand side you'll have 39.2 t minus 4.9 t squared so we can take the right hand side to the left hand side and so the common terms will cancel each other out so finally what you get is 78.4 minus 19.6 minus 19.6 t equals 0. So 19.6t will be equal to 78.4 minus 19.6. 14 minus 6 is 8. So here you have 7. 17 minus 9 is 8. So this becomes 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. So that is 58.8. So 19.6t equals 58.8. t equals 58. 0.8 divided by 19.6 and if you do 19.6 times 3 so 6 times 3 is 18 9 times 3 is 27 27 plus 1 is 28 1 times 3 is 3 3 plus 2 is 5 so therefore 19.6 times 3 gives you 58.8 so the time t is equal to 3 seconds so now the distance at which from the ground at which the two balls collide that is s is equal to 39.2 times 3 minus 4.9 times 3 squared. So that is equal to 39.2 times 3 gives you 117.6 and minus 4.9 times 9 gives you 44.1. So 117.6 minus 44.1 6 minus 1 gives you 5, 7 minus 4 gives you 3, 11 minus 4 gives you 7. So the correct answer is 73.5 meters. So if you look at our options, you can see that option B, 73.5 meters, is the correct option. The main idea is to use the second law of kinematics, which we also call as the second law of motion. So now let's look at another question. This question is asking us to find out the dimensional formula of magnetic flux. Now magnetic flux is represented as B. I mean, no, not B, it's phi. So the quantity phi can be written down as B times A. It's represented as B times A, where B is the magnetic flux per unit area. And this B can be calculated as F by QV, from the formula for magnetic force, that is f is equal to qv cross b. So the final formula for magnetic flux is force times area divided by q times v. So force is written in dimensional formula as mlt power minus 2 then you have area which is l squared then you and divide and then you and in the denominator you have q that is charge charge is current into time so at and then you have velocity that is lt raised to minus 1 so mass remains unchanged you have l times l squared that gives you l cube l cube divided by l gives you l squared so ml squared, then you have time. So t power minus 2, and then you have t in the denominator, so that becomes t raised to minus 1. So t raised to minus 2 minus 1 gives you, but instead of doing that, it's better if we cancel t and t raised to minus 1 in the denominator. So t times t raised to minus 1 is t raised to 1 minus 1, that is t raised to 0. So t raised to minus 2 stays as it is. In this formula 
and then since the current that is a is in the denominator we can write that as a raised to minus 1 so m l squared t raised to minus 2 a raised to minus 1 is the correct formula the correct dimensional formula for magnetic flux that is phi b so among the four options you can see that option b gives you the correct answer option a is ml squared t raised to minus 1 a raised to minus 2 the exponents are different that's incorrect and in option c um, t is given as minus 1 t is raised to the power minus 1 which is incorrect and in option d you have l raised to the power 0 that means there is no dimension of length which is incorrect so the correct answer is option b ml squared t raised to minus 2 a raised to minus 1 here comes the final question of this episode the time dependence of a physical quantity p is given by p equals p naught times e alpha times minus alpha t squared where alpha is a constant and t is time you need to find out whether the constant alpha is a dimensional dimensionless quality quantity or it has dimensions of p t raised to minus 2 or t squared so in this equation you have p equals p naught times e alpha times minus alpha t squared now e is you know the exponential value this has dimension less And another important thing that you should note here is that the physical quantity P as well as P naught have same dimensions. So P and P naught have the same dimensions. So in order to for this, in order for this, you know, equation to be dimensionally correct, the term in the brackets that is minus alpha t squared has to be dimensionless. So alpha t squared is dimensionless. So you can write alpha as 1 divided by t squared. So if alpha t squared is a constant, then alpha is that constant divided by t squared, which is ct raised to minus 2. So the dimensions of alpha will be t raised to minus 2. So among the four options, you can see that option c is the correct option alpha the constant has dimensions of t raised to minus 2 and the reason is that you want to get alpha t squared as a dimensionless qu quantity when there is already a t squared so alpha has to be has to have the dimensions of t raised to minus 2 and the reason why this bracketed term is dimensionless is because p and p naught have the same dimensions and so this is, is equ this equation in order to be true has to be dimensionally correct so taking out all of these elements and examining them you can see that option C alpha has dimensions of t raised to minus 2 is the correct answer so that concludes this episode of VIT Triple E questions with solutions we hope you found this episode interesting for more of our videos you can always subscribe to our channel which is brain blitz audios in order to access more of our videos on VIT Triple E you can hit the playlist whose link is given in the description below in order to get the latest updates, you can, you know, hit the bell icon, which is again present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.